Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode for your spiritual warrior training program or the happy healthy fit um, I don't, like this is like the pillars to perfect health um, what else do I want to call this master class maybe happy healthy fit master class yes so welcome back thank you for being here today today I'm gonna to be talking about the figure fit nutrition plan and you know one of the things that I often hear from people is that they have a hard time sticking to a nutrition plan or a diet or some sort of program and one of the things that i always talk about is never dieting again and if you start living a lifestyle that is for you then you will never have to diet again you will actually just start to live this lifestyle and do the things do the tools every day that are for you and you will never have to diet again you won't have to do any sort of crazy workout programs any sort of crazy diets um, any sort of crash things um, to to get your body where really where you want it to be once you live this lifestyle consistently for a couple of years your body's going to find its norm and you're going to lose that excess fat, you're going to start to get healthy, um, and your body will find its equilibrium. It will find its point that it likes to be at. And every single person has a set point for, you know, really like where their body kind of feels good, especially um, the homeostasis, that set point, this equilibrium set point. Some people like to say things like, my body likes to have an extra 10 pounds on it. Well, that's not necessarily true, okay? Um, some people might think that they're just bound to be super skinny. Um, and some people kind of often think that they're bound to have excess weight on their body. Well, I want you to get really real with yourself and just kind of look at your family and look at the lifestyle that they've been living ever since you were born and before you were born because you know the family lineage what the family does for fun um how they if they drink if they celebrate um with food if everything kind of stems around that then that is the way that your family has been living and it's really what you've grown up with that is your norm so if you want something different and you want to have a different lifestyle then it's up to you to create that space to where you can move into and start living as that person who lives a new lifestyle okay so i want you to think about the families that really build their free time around activities um maybe you know some maybe you don't now if you want that to be your kind of a lifestyle then you're gonna have to take baby steps but you're going to have to take the actions to get you there okay so if you want to be the kind of family that does not um you know sit around a table of food and eat mindlessly for hours um and just get overweight and get unhealthy because that's what's the chosen thing to do then you're gonna have to take new action Here's the thing, you guys, you're gonna have to create the space, you're gonna have to create the activities, create the environment for you to have the kind of lifestyle you want. And it takes effort and it takes action. Those two things are required if you wanna make any sort of changes. It takes effort and it takes action, all right? So um, effort, I'm gonna write these down. I want you to write these down. Effort and action. All right. Um, one of the workouts this month is actually called Hera. And the mantra for this workout is, I give up old behavior patterns and I focus on what I really do want. And today I was doing that workout and I looked at that mantra and it just kind of made me stop in my tracks. And, you know, these mantras are, in these workouts, they're really to help you to, they're really meant to kind of shake you up and make you really think. And today that did that for me because there are some some lazy patterns that I have personally been in um, 
out of fear of moving to the next level of fear of really showing up for some of these bigger projects that I want to do, I haven't been showing up. And so I know that for myself, I've got to do something hard every day. I have to really face that fear and move into it and show up anyways, even though I'm kind of afraid, even though I want to do this thing and I know what I need to do, I'm just kind of afraid to do it. So we gotta like face the fear and move in to do the things that we know we need to do, all right? So the best way, and the book, you guys, it really helps you with this, with that um, setting yourself up to win activity, is you've got to know what you want first and foremost, and you've gotta create the action steps that you're going to take. What are you willing to do? That's really what it is. What are you willing to do? And you guys, this has to do with your um, your life, your nutrition. It has to do with your relationships, um, a new relationship or an old relationship. It has to do with um, your career, your finances. You always have to know what you want, what you don't want, and you have to turn your cheek and focus and take action towards what you do want. It is up to you. Nobody else can do this for you. It is totally, utterly up to you. Okay? So I try to make it easy by having a system here that you can follow that has to do with the workouts. Doing the three workouts every single week. Non-negotiable, hands down, they are a must. Okay? If you can just do that, boom. Your workouts are in the bag, okay? Once you get that consistently down, you can add a workouts in the off days, but you gotta get the strength training workouts down before you ever start adding anything else because you guys, those are primary and those come before anything else. And if you think that adding in running is going to work, you're sabotaging yourself. And we're gonna talk about why in this broadcast today. The, hand, the workouts are primary because they are strength training. And um, I'll get into that soon, but I think that's in, another, that's in another video coming up. But you guys, that's primary step number one, is get into a consistent rhythm of doing these workouts, these three workouts every single week, non-negotiable, nothing gets in your way, you're gonna get these workouts done, come hell or high water, you're gonna do these three workouts, that's it, nothing else, no walks, no running, no nothing else, these come first, then you can add the other stuff in, okay? All right, second is this handy dandy, easy peasy food guide, that you need to follow and live off of this list, okay? This right here makes it easy. This right here is your guide and it's like, okay, well, if it's not on this list, then it's a no. That means I can't have it. So this doesn't show corn dogs. This isn't showing root beer floats. This isn't showing nachos and fake cheese at a baseball game. Like none of that is on here, okay? So let's talk about that for a second. Let's say you're going to a baseball game and they've got some stuff there that you just want to eat. You know, like I go to baseball games sometimes and sometimes you're just hungry and you want to eat something. What do they have that you can have? You guys got to start choosing yourself. You got to start choosing your future self over the present moment self. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment and I'm just going to compare this to something that is like, totally what people may not associate this with, but if you're in a relationship and you're involved in an intimate relationship with somebody, you have morals and standards of how you're gonna be in that relationship. Either you're going to be a person of integrity and you're gonna keep your word that you're gonna be faithful and you're going to be faithful no matter what, no matter where you are, you're gonna be faithful. You're gonna uphold your own moral obligations to your own soul, okay? It's the same thing for food and the way that you take care of your body. You gotta have a moral obligation that you care about your health and that you're gonna take care of your body just as much as you're gonna take care of your relationship. Or some people take care of their cars or their houses better than their bodies, okay? So you really gotta be um, 
real and honest with yourself about how well you show up for yourself in those moments where temptation is in front of you because temptation, it's the same across the board. You're either tempted with someone else who's pretty and hot and standing in front of you or you're tempted with that ice cream cone or the nachos and chips or you're tempted with um, going shopping and spending a bunch of money that you don't have. Temptation across the board is the same. What is your concept? What is your concept of self? Who are you? Who are you showing up as in the world across the board? Okay, that's pretty deep. And I believe wholeheartedly in this God and Goddess Manifesto that you know who you are, you know what you're worth, you know your value, you know what you bring to the table, you know what you deserve and how you wanna live your life. And you guys, having standards for your relationships, for your body, for your mind, it's up to you to really have those standards and to live by them, okay? So part two is the food part, you know? Like, let's go back to this. If it's not on this list, you shouldn't really be eating it. Now, there are exceptions every once in a while with um, like, um, and that's, that's even a big thing to say is like, okay, well, when is an exception okay? When is it okay? Um, what I like to say is, you really need to know your nutrition and understand what you're having and when you're having it for your body. And that's what this course is all about. And this is what my nutrition and fat loss mastery course teaches you is really how and where and what to eat, um, when to have the carbs. We're going to talk about that today. Um, but then knowing what is appropriate, not as a cheat, because people talk about like a cheat day or a cheat meal. I don't believe in that. I believe that you're eating to fuel your body and you know what your body needs every single day. Now, if you choose to have a dessert, for example, I would say that you need to make a great choice for your body. Now, last week we talked about um, gut health. And if you know that, that um, you cannot have gluten and you cannot have things like dairy, those are harming you. You need to make a clear cut decision that you're just not going to have those things. So what can you have instead? Can you have a bowl of berries with, um, uh, can you have a bowl of berries? Can you do that? Can you have chocolate? What is dessert to you? What do you consider delicious? Okay. Is it, um, is it cakes? Is it cookies? Well, then take these ingredients and make something that is good for you to have, okay? Because <clears throat> it's always good to have, um, not a cheat, but having something that is going to satisfy that craving, that sweet craving, but the ingredients in that thing are good for you. So let me take, take a sip of water. And I'm gonna talk about nutrition. Okay, all right, so total soapbox here. Um, so yes, like I said, I've made this program to be the tool for you. So all you gotta do is do the work, do it, show up, make it easier, easy on yourself. Just watch the videos and do the moves. Um, make it easy on yourself. Pick a recipe for the week that I've posted in the group page and make that, you know, make those. Um, uh, find something else that you can make and like a lot of maybe old recipes that you're used to eating, you can take and replace, like for example, if it calls for a cup of sugar um, and that's not on our list of sweets, what can you have instead? You can have um, like coconut crystals, that's a sugar, that's a replacement. You can have honey, you can have maple syrup. So those are replacements, okay? Um, all right, so let me get into here. So what I'm gonna be talking about today is really how to make this effective for you, okay? In my book, I have a chapter, chapter 10, on how to become a fat burner. Now, how to become a fat burning machine, that's chapter 10. And you guys, I'm gonna combine that along with chapter 11 on macronutrients and nutrient timing because all of these are gonna play together, all right? So now, 
like I said, we're going off of the food list in the back of the book. Now I want to talk to you really quickly about, now last week if you watched that video it showed a lot about the nutrition science. Now we've got three macronutrients and out of all of the macronutrients they break down into micronutrients, vitamins and minerals that get absorbed into your body to fuel you. And all of the macronutrients that you eat are fat, protein and carbohydrates. And within the fats and even, not the fats, within the carbohydrates you get um, fiber, sometimes um, I believe, I don't know, I think protein even has fiber. So, um, so <clears throat> fiber is a micronutrient from the macros, okay? Vitamins and minerals are micronutrients from the macronutrient. Now, every carbohydrate and every protein, one gram converts to four calories. One gram of fat converts to nine calories, okay? So based on your goal weight, okay, you can figure this out like it's not your high school weight. It is not where you were when you were 18. That is not your goal weight. It's really about like if you're interested in learning your macronutrients, I was highly, highly advise you to do my Nutrition and Fat Loss Mastery e-course. We're not gonna have enough time to go into the depth of everything you need to know, but if you're really interested in nailing this down, I would highly recommend that you do that e-course. It's a one-time purchase, you'll have it for life, and it will be lifetime knowledge that you'll never have to learn again. Once you know it, you know it. And you may, you may even kind of forget, you may need to watch that video series a couple of times, maybe three to four times, maybe more to really nail it in every single time to really drill down and get yourself where you want to be. So today's kind of an overview about the nutrition, the figure fit nutrition plan. What is this? What are we doing here? Um, we're eating real foods first and foremost. We're eating foods that um, are real, that are, that are from the earth, that are earth given, that are not man-made. Um, so having something like I'm not a vegetarian I am uh, this is you all know that this is a paleo based program um, I don't that doesn't mean I eat a ton of meat okay what that means is I'm eating foods that were earth given okay um, even the Bible says I gave you domain over the land so um, you know I kind of look at um, Indians and how they would bless their foods before um, giving they would bless the life of the animal that gave its life for them to eat that meal and and if you want to be a vegetarian that's okay i totally honor that and admire that too um i just know that for myself personally i don't mind eating the meat i bless my meals and um i don't really feel that it's bad i do believe that we can that we should give like it's all it's just a big circle of life and um, I believe in morals and ethics and ethically raised um, meat and ethically, um, you know, animals that have been, you know, their lives have been given for us to eat that food. That needs to be ethical. And um, there's a lot of farming practices that I do not agree with. And so I, I find it very important for us to buy ethically raised meats and understand where we're getting our food from that's not conventionally raised, it's not mass produced because that's where we're getting into big problems with those cows and chickens being injected with steroids and hormones that you should not be eating because they're getting passed on into your body. So if you're not eating organic meats, if you're not eating the foods that are ethically raised, then you are getting those hormones passed on to you. You're getting steroids passed on to you because that's getting into your body and it's breaking down and it's going into your body as well. So um, that's where a lot of problems come from, okay? So that's really important to be aware of that. Now also, I want you to um, really think about other, you know, earth-given foods like nuts and seeds, um, vegetables, um, fruits, lemons, limes, you know, not just like bananas and strawberries and berries and um, apples and things like that, but really what else is there? You know, all of the fruits that are available to us humans, all of the vegetables that are available to us humans, how often do you really spread out and have an array of vegetables rather than just sticking to like a core four or five? You know, it's really important to have a, a rainbow or a variety of the foods that we're eating what else is a food that's that's given from the earth? Like 
coconut, coconut um, uh, meat, the meat inside the coconut, coconut oil, um, olives, olive oil, avocados, avocado oil. All of these things are earth given. And those are the foods that we need to be putting into our body primarily. Okay, now let's talk. I did talk last week about the, the macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats. Now, protein breaks down into amino acids, which are the building block of every single new cell that's built in your body. Carbohydrates um, use amylase to break down into glucose that goes in and out of your muscle tissues, in and out of your liver to help you move. It gives you energy. It fuels, it's one of the um, macronutrients that fuels your brain. Fat is the other. Fat's a better fuel source. Um, so that's why I want you to convert. That's why I want you to become a fat burner. All of you, I want you to become fat burners. Every single one of you need to become fat burners. Being a carbohydrate burner is not good for your health. It creates diabetes. It causes um, pancreas problems. It causes um, metabolic disease. It causes immune disorders. Every single one of you, if you're operating right now off of a ton of carbohydrates day in and day out, we got to kill that. We got to get you to become a fat burner. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to lower your carbohydrates over time and we're going to get you understanding. Oh, hold on. I got a low power, low battery. Um, we got to get you to understand your own personal macronutrients. That's why I highly recommend that you do that Nutrition and Fat Loss Mastery e-course so that you can build your own macronutrients. Your whole family, you and your husband, your wife, um, your children, you can do this for your family and learn this. Get your macros down and then learn how to build your meals. We're going to talk about that today. But knowing your numbers is critical. Now, whenever I get off my numbers, I gain weight. Um, it's very easy for me to gain weight because I am a fat burner. So I eat the fat, the high fat foods, I eat the protein, and, and sometimes I eat too many carbs. I'm normal just like anybody else. And so if you're, if you're not really aware and you're not watching your macronutrients, um, which I don't really believe in anymore. In the beginning, I, I used to do tracking, uh, like in my fitness pal, um, but that's when I was dieting. But when you really start living this way, and you fuel based on what you're doing. You be, you fuel your body based on knowing the science and eating the right foods at the right times. Then you don't have to diet, you just live. It's great, okay? So proteins, like I said, break down into amino acids. The carbs break down into um, glucose. And then the fats break down into fatty acids. And those fatty acids are transporters that transports the nutrients, the vitamins, and the minerals in and out of the cells. So you've got to have the fats. Now, if you're really new to this fat burning idea, I want you to do some extra research on being a fat burner because being a fat burner is the one of the best things that you can do for your body. Your body loves operating on really high quality fats for fuel. So things like avocados, um, not really nuts and seeds, um, but good high quality nuts. There are a few of them like um, pistachios are really good. Macadamia nuts are really good. Walnuts and pecans are all high quality nuts. Um, but some people can't do them, but those are the best of the best. Now. Peanuts actually have a tendency to have a lot of mold in them. So you want to be really careful with the peanuts, um, ground peanut butter, even, even organic. Sometimes that's really harmful for people. Um, so high quality fats, you know, salmon, salmon, Pacific Coast wild caught salmon, um, never farm raised. Having, oh, saturated fats, you guys. The saturated fat in the foods that we eat actually help your body to build hormones that you need. So people who don't ever have saturated fat are actually doing their body a disservice because your body does need that to create hormones in the body. Um, they actually, I think, I don't know where I write, write about that in my book. Mm. let's see I know it's in here somewhere maybe it's under like fat burning 
being a fat burner. Nope, I don't know where it is. Um, so let's see here. Let me get there. I don't know where it is, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about really converting to become a fat burner, okay? So we're going to, you're gonna learn your macronutrients, that's that's first and foremost, um, but really, without even knowing that, building your, your meals around protein, okay? Protein, whether it's eggs, whether it is um, a whey protein, whether it is protein from vegetables, like Brussels sprouts have a lot of protein in them, even broccoli. Um, you need a, about a palm size of protein at every single meal, okay? So if you're about 125 pounds, you need about a gram or half of a gram. Of, actually, you need about a gram. I'm not even gonna lie on that one because actually the older you get, you need about a gram of protein per lean pound, lean muscle mass, and lean mass on your body, so your goal weight. So for example, I'm about 142. I need about 142 grams of protein. Either, uh, what is it? Let me see. 142. So I need about 71. That would be half of a gram. Um, 71 grams of protein every day, up to a full gram of protein um, during my days. Okay, so. And that'd be about 142 divided by, let's say I'm doing five meals a day. That would put me at about 28 grams of protein per meal. So I'm not always having that, just to be real. So let's say I'm doing 75% um, of, I have, uh, that would be 142 times. I'm just kind of doing some crunch in here. This is why you do my Nutrition and Fat Loss Mastery e-course, <laughs> so that you can figure out your macros. Um, so if I did that, it's about 75 grams a day, and I would wanna have um, about 15 grams per, per five meals, okay? So for me, I'm normally doing like 24 grams of protein at every meal. I'm trying to get that about five times a day. And that's, that's first and foremost, that is my mission. Protein first. Second, is fat. Okay, where, where's my fat coming from throughout the day? What, what forms of healthy fat can I have throughout the day? Avocados, am I doing any nuts and seeds right now? And would I prefer oil? Am I gonna have olive oil with my meal? Am I gonna have coconut oil? Am I doing MCT oil in my figure fit fatty coffee? How much? It's not very hard to get macronutrients in the forms of um, uh, your, it's really not that hard to get the the calories you need from fat because they're so dense and there's so many calories in you know one gram of fat. So usually I'm about 85, I think, grams of fat per day. So I, you know, my numbers are based on me and my body weight. So your numbers have nothing to do with mine. And so it's really important to understand what your own numbers are. So we, we start with a palm size portion of protein and then we add fats, and then we add vegetables. We don't add fruit. This is where most people go wrong. They think they're living healthy and eating healthy because they're having fruit. But the thing is, fruit is so carbohydrate rich, and if you're not having your base structure of foods, your protein and your fats, then you're having a bunch of carbs, and therefore you're not eating healthy in, like you think you are. So we add, so it's protein first, then fats, then vegetables, and then carbohydrates from fruit or um, root vegetables like sweet potatoes, part, um, um, you know, broccoli or, no, yeah, broccoli or even like spinach or, um, oh, you could have, you could have potatoes, you know, um, you know, like that's actually a earth given food. Um, it's going to be more impactful on your glycemic index. It's gonna have a higher glycemic index to it. So um, you really gotta just watch your body after you eat those things. And so, okay, so complex carbohydrates are things like um, sweet potatoes, um, rice. Um, we don't do grains on this program. We don't do wheat. We don't eat those things because they're actually anti-nutrients. They impact your brain. They inhibit brain growth. They, you're, you have smaller brain when you eat those foods. 
Um, so we're actually eating to fuel the brain. So I want to mention a couple books. Um, my friend Rob Wolf, Wolf, I had him on my Figure Fit podcast. He wrote the book Eat to Be Wired to Eat. Wired to Eat. That might be a good book to check out. Also, another friend of mine who actually had a massive brain injury wrote the book Feed a Brain. Um, those might be some books that you want to check out if you're really interested in moving deeper into this concept. Okay. So we just stay away from the foods that are um, industrial farm created in a factory, you know, canola oil, corn oil, all of that stuff, you guys, is just loaded with, um, with, with chemicals and pesticides. So most of the foods on the market that are in a box have canola oil or soybean oil, all, most all of them unless you know for sure you're buying something organic and it is from a quality health food store and you look at the ingredients and it says avocado oil or made with coconut oil like those are okay but the ones with corn oil and soybean oil you got to stay away from because those are ruining your digestive system and they were they're harming your gut so you basically you guys anything in a package it's not real food it's not real food we've got to start making our foods you got to go to the grocery store you got to buy the lettuce you got to buy the spinach and arugula you got to come home if you want to have a romaine salad you got to cut the lettuce um you've got to cook the meat you got to steam the foods that you want to eat Learn, you know, just take those recipes off the, the page and just do those recipes. You'll start to really get this um, lifestyle if you just focus on one new recipe a week. Just start there and make it non-negotiable that you are going to live this lifestyle that you're gonna just start finding new favorite recipes. You're gonna get so good at making these recipes that you're gonna have new staples. So if your staple now is cereal, then you're gonna have a new staple um, from one of the recipes that we post in that Figure Fit group page. One of my staples is um, roasted vegetables with the eggs on top that are over easy. It's so good and my son loves it. I've made it for friends. Friends love it. It's just so good. It just takes about 20, 20 minutes to prepare it. Some are less. That takes longer because you got to roast the vegetables, um, but it's, it's something I really make big, so I have the vegetables for a couple of days, and then all I got to do is fry up an egg or two and then throw that on top, and it's just mwah, so good. So you'll find your new staples, okay? If you're an avid chip eater, you got to find replacements. Go to the health food store, go to the grocery store, like Whole Foods, and go in the chip aisle. Like, if you really have to have those, you're better off replacing and finding something that you're willing to eat that is going to really kick the bad things out of your life, um, that you, you'll still get that fix um, that you crave. Because really, if you're not really satisfying those urges and those cravings, that's really kind of when you your mind feels like it's on a diet. And so it's always better to replace rather than just take away because you're gonna go a little crazy. So it's better to replace with something that is good for you. Um, we don't do sweetened beverages. You guys get really aware of what you're drinking. Some people are like, I can't drink water. You got to drink water. Um, water in the minimum every day, at least half of your body weight in water, no matter what, minimum. If you can drink your whole body weight, you got to build up to this of water in a day. So for me, like I said earlier, I'm about 142 pounds. That's 100, 142. Let's say I'm doing how many? How many of this? There's 16.9 fluid ounces in this. I needed to eat, drink eight of these a day. That's not hard. I can wake up, have one in the morning before I have anything, have one after my coffee. I, so basically, like, how many hours am I awake? What am I gonna do during the day? When am I gonna have these? So uh, two, four, six, eight, have two in the morning, have two mid-morning, have two or, or two at noon, uh, noonish hour, two in the afternoon between three and four, have two between five and 8 p.m. And, and try to cut it off, you know, before maybe an hour and a half before you go to bed so that you're not waking up and going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. But that just knowing your numbers and, and, and really setting those 
you know, out throughout your day. So it's like, oh, it's water time. It's not food time. It's actually water time. So a lot of times you're, you think you're hungry, but you're not hungry. You're actually thirsty. Your body is actually begging for water, especially in this heat or when you're working out or you're having coffee. Um, your body really, really is craving that water. Speaking of water, I'm going to take a drink. Okay. What not to eat? I'm just going to fire through this list. Refined whole grains. We don't eat that. So no bread, cereal, muffins, bagels, wheat, barley, rye, corn, buckwheat, millet. We don't do that. Um, no processed foods. No meal replacement bars. Be careful with that. You, there's some you can find out there that are good. I used to do that in the beginning. I used, I had those a lot. When I first went paleo, I would find like paleo approved, and that's okay. Um, sometimes that's all right if that's all you can do. But I really think whole foods are better, like whole real foods, real recipes. Um, uh, you know, having a prep day every week, just making that kind of easier on yourself because it can be you can get into a real big. Um, habit of having protein meal replacement bars a lot and that'll kind of tend to be your food and then you're going to end up getting sick because you're not getting the quality ingredients that your body needs crackers cookies pretzels uh, breakfast bars granola bars toaster pastries snack bars um, you got to be real careful about that kind of stuff and if you are ever going to have anything like that just make sure the ingredients are approved that they're part of this list in the back of the book. All of the ingredients. So let's make sure it's made with coconut oil. Make sure it's, it's got good quality nuts and seeds in it. Um, and that it doesn't have any food additives in it. Um, soy. Soy is, it contains plant estrogens. And so in the form of isoflavones, which actually disrupt your body's hormones, your natural hormone making abilities. So we want to stay away from soy. Actually, you guys, 98% of the soy that is organic in our country is exported. And only about like 2% is kept in our country. Um, and so you want to be careful with soy. And if you ever do have soy, make sure that you know that it's organic. Okay. Um, so soy and grains also contain lectins, um, which actually mess with your leptin sensitivity levels, which is your leptin is what tells you when you're full and what tells you when you're hungry. So you gotta be careful with the soybean oils and any sort of soy, okay? Because they are disrupting your estrogen levels in your body, your hormone levels. We stay away from refined sugar. Refined sugar is actually poison in your body, it lowers your immune system, it feeds cancer cells. Um, sugar needs to just be kicked out of your household. I haven't bought sugar in probably since like pre-paleo days, which was back in 2009. I don't have it. I remember at a holiday, my, my sister was over and she's like, don't you have any sugar to add to my coffee? And I was like, I have none of that stuff. Like I've got butter. <laughs> And I got cream, but I don't have sugar. Um, so, you know, if you want to have those kind of sweets, then co um, coconut crystals would be an alternative, something that's real. Um, maple syrup, honey, okay, those are real. Those are real um, from the earth, and they've got vitamins and minerals in them. Now, obviously, you don't want to have a lot of those, okay? because they're carbs and they're impacting your insulin levels and um, we wanna be super careful with that. Because your body, I don't know, I think I talked about this in one of the videos recently, your body can only tolerate one teaspoon, uh, is that right, one, yeah, like one teaspoon, whatever that is, how many grams that is, um, of sugar in the bloodstream at any given time. If there's more than that, the body is like going freaky, pumping out insulin, trying to get rid of the sugar toxicity in the bloodstream. And, you know, insulin is going out and grabbing the sugar and pulling it into the cells to get rid of it, to get it out of the bloodstream. So we want to be careful with all sugars, all of them. 
Um, a lot of the times people think that having diet, for example, I was at a 4th of July party really recently and they were having um, some cocktails and they're like, do you want one of these drinks? And I was like, well, what's in it? And they're like, diet, cranberry juice and Tito's vodka or something like that. I'm like, no, thank you. Um, I won't touch diet anything. It's got aspartame in it. Aspartame is a chemical. Aspartame is linked to formaldehyde in your retina. After 98 degrees, what's your body temperature? 98.6. So you drink aspartame and you're putting formaldehyde in your retina. I mean, come on. Um, all of that stuff, you guys, is poison. All of these fake sugars are poison. You've got to retrain your palate to like natural foods, to like the flavor of water, to, it's like it's got a flavor, you can always taste it, this has a flavor. Um, water out of the faucet has a flavor, water out of my uh, refrigerator has a flavor. I can taste the difference. And that's what, you gotta really train your palate, your mouth to be able to, to um, sense, sense these different sensations from the food that you're having, okay? Um, now, if you're going to be an alcohol drinker, you got to make sure that you're having like um, alcohol, like maybe wine or like I said, be careful that you're what you're having with your wine or, or with your drinks. Um, never diet. You guys got to get diet out of your life. OK. Um, beer. Mm, some of you are beer drinkers. You guys, beer is a no. It's a no, no. Look at all the people who have that massive gut. That's a beer gut. There's like, that is so awful. What is happening? They're pregnant with a beer baby. Like, this is not okay. Um, there's something seriously wrong happening. And um, the, the beer has gluten in it. And so gluten, once again, we're going back to um, how... These are harming your body. Obviously, it's beer and it's it's got gluten in it and it's alcohol. So it's a double whammy. It's really harming you. It's harming your liver. Um, I'm going to just talk for al on alcohol for a minute because a lot of people make exceptions. Alcohol is kind of like a fun thing to do, right? People use it as a way to create fun. Well, I've done this. And it's something that over the years I've just, I've been like, you know what? It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. It does so many things that are negative to the body, especially when you're somebody who wants to have your mind focused. And for me, I like to meditate. I like to receive those insights from, from my, my soul, my spirit, my higher self. And I have, when, when I was drinking, you know, when I was, eating bad foods, when I was really just living in these negative habits, I never got that clarity of mind. And um, when I drink alcohol, I am foggy, I am depressed, I am sad, I am craving bad foods. Um, but the biggest thing that I notice, you guys, is my foggy head. Um, it's just not good for me. It's not good for anybody and it may sound like fun. It may be fun in those moments, but you got to really look at all of the things that are adding up on top of the drinking. Okay. So what are you doing? What has happened? Who are you hanging out with? What does their lifestyle look like? Are they living the kind of life that you want to live? Do they have the body you want to have? What are they eating when they're drinking? Uh, do they even care what they're pouring down their throat? Do they even care? Do you even care what you're eating when you're drinking? Because if you stop caring, your self-love has completely evaporated. It's gone. You've, you, you've turned over your complete sense of who you are, your sense of self, to this form of alcohol that is now running the show because you've, you've lost all care about um, what you want to be, who you want to be, and how you want to treat your body. You got to have some standards. And so, you know, like, I'm pretty strict about this now. I didn't used to be this way. But, um, you know, I learned through lessons. I learned through, um, you know, moments where I was drinking alcohol and there, maybe there was an argument and I'm like, Ugh, this wasn't really fun. Or maybe the next day I just felt really depressed and crummy and um, cloudy headed and 
didn't have a good workout or didn't have a good meditation and my whole day was kind of ruined. So I used to, even to, in my book, I talk about how I have a rule, like if I'm going to drink um, one day, I have a rule that it cannot affect my next day. It's a decision I made that day, but it can't affect my tomorrow. So hangovers, out of the question. I can't have enough to have a hangover. Um, because that's going into my next day. It's affecting my workout the next day. It's affecting my clarity the next day. It's affecting my work the next day. Um, and then I got to the point where I was like, really, I started to notice anything that I drank was affecting my mind, my clarity, my happiness levels. So I just got to that place where I was like, you know what, I'm just done. I'm done. And it's a good thing because alcohol does a lot of damage to your liver. Alcohol actually makes your nose and your ears grow, um, which is crazy. Uh, if you look at people who have been drinking their whole lives, they're, they've got really big ears, really big nose. I mean, those are things that grow on us anyways, but alcohol intensifies that big time. Um, alcohol is going to force your body to stop burning fat calories, okay? Because your body, the liver is going to stop and it's gonna work extra hard to get rid of the toxic alcohol that's in your bloodstream. And so everything else goes by the wayside. My, fo my phone has got 10%, I gotta hurry up. I can talk forever on this. Um, and then like just your, your, um, I forgot where I was. I forgot what my train of thought was on that. Like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, you're, yeah, the liver is really focused on getting rid of the alcohol. So like you, you quit burning fat. Okay. So let's just say you're, you're a fat burner. That's a perfect example. Like I'm a fat burner. I'm a figure fit fat burner. So what do you have to do if you're going to drink alcohol? You, well, you got to really know that before you drink, let's say you're going to have a party on Saturday. This is a perfect example because sometimes people are like drinking every day. Well, guess what? If you're drinking every day, you're screwed. Your fat loss efforts, your nutrition efforts, they're screwed because your body is always trying to get rid of that alcohol. You have no real means to equalize your body and to really get your body where you want it to be. You're sabotaging yourself. Now, let's say you have alcohol once a week. Um, before and after, how you eat is critically important because if you've got a lot of fat in your system, you're, you're, um, once you drink the alcohol, that's going to sit there. Okay. Um, afterwards, your body is still trying to get rid of that alcohol up to 48 hours afterwards. So if you drink, if you drink and eat fatty foods, those fatty foods are going to sit there and you're not going to be able to burn them effectively. Okay. So Alcohol is a really big, big, big thing in our country, in our world. And a lot of people don't really know how to manage this. And once again, I do talk about this in depth in the Nutrition and Fat Loss Mastery e-course. All right, so, um, okay, so I talked about how to eat palm-sized protein, then fat, then vegetables, and your carbohydrates can be used either before or after your workouts. Now. This is really key. You cannot just have carbs before workout because you will spike and you will dip and you will crash. Every single meal has to have protein. Um, so for those of you who are really, really interested in building muscle, just remember that you've got to have your protein at every single meal, okay? All right, so becoming a fat burner, what we're doing here is we're reducing, we're doing exactly what I just said, we're reducing the carbohydrates, we're using those carbs at specific times. So after your workout, you have depleted the carbohydrates that your body is storing. Now your body stores carbohydrates in your muscle tissues and in your liver. So I have coined this phrase called carb capacity. The more muscle you have, the more muscle that you build during these figure fit workouts, the more carb capacity you will have. That's a beautiful thing. You guys, I learned this over the course of my journey because I was able to have more carbs and not gain weight. And I realized that, oh my gosh, it's because I have more muscle tissue. I'm able to store more. It's just like a bigger purse. I can, I can put more stuff in it. And I'm able to utilize that in those workouts, all right? So if you have no muscle right now, your carb capacity is very, very limited, all right? So, and I'm not encouraging that you have more carbs when you have more muscle, but I'm just saying 
you will have more, it's like a bigger gas tank, okay? It's just an added benefit. You'll be able to have more carbs and they will not affect you in terms of gaining weight, um, becoming fat or gaining a lot of weight. You're just gonna be able to store them because you're gonna have more places to store them, okay? Um, now, if you quit doing the workouts and you're having a bunch of carbs, and yep, there you go, you're gonna start gaining weight, okay? So, um, we're not dieting, you guys, this is a lifestyle, we're eating these foods. You're lowering your carbohydrate, you're converting your, let's say you're a massive carbohydrate person right now, um, you're getting most of your fuel from carbs, from pasta, from things like that. You're gonna have to start to completely change and start getting your protein, start getting good quality fats, and start earning those carbohydrates. So um, after workouts is the best time to have your protein and carbohydrates because you have earned them. You have depleted your muscle tissues, the glucose from your muscle tissues, and you've gotta give it back. So people who eat only protein after their workouts because they think they're doing a good thing, they're not because you gotta give your body back what it just depleted. And, and once you do these workouts, you are tearing the muscle tissues. So I did shoulders today. You're pushing the weights, you're tearing the muscle tissues, you're depleting all of the energy from them. So afterwards, I go immediately and I have one of the isogenics figure, uh, the protein shakes. Um, after your workouts, you gotta have protein and carbohydrates, no fats, okay? Um, because you gotta give the carbohydrates back to the muscle tissue so that you can go on with your day, so that you have energy throughout the day. Because if you don't, you are depleted, and then your body is going to turn where for it? People think it's gonna turn to fat, but t fat takes a long time to, longer time to convert to fuel, so yes it will, but you'll just be like, ugh, you'll be drained. Plus, you will not have given your muscles the fuel they need to regrow. The protein alone will not do it. The protein does it, but the protein alone will not do it. It needs both, okay? So having doing these workouts, and if this is all you do, doing these workouts and having a shake afterwards is going to be key for you, okay? All right, so that's all I got for today. So I'm gonna, um, let me know if you have any questions. Let me, let me look here and see if you have any questions. Um, if not, I'm gonna sign off. And um, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day. Please let me know if you have any questions below. Um, now, once again, in this book, in the back of the book, you've got that food list and I'm posting the recipes every single week. I always just highly advise you to pick one recipe that you can go buy the ingredients for. You guys, stop going to the grocery store and just filling up your cart. Stop doing that. Stop, 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 stop. Because a lot of the times you're buying things that you're not even, you shouldn't even be eating or you're not gonna eat. You have good intentions to eat it, but start buying the ingredients for recipes, okay? And then be really diligent with the other foods that you put in your body. Like do, do spend the money on these shakes. Get signed up. If you're not yet signed up with Isogenics, get signed up. Spend your money on those key ingredients that your body needs to fuel the body efforts that you want. Um, this is hands down something that I've been doing since 2012. I will never not have protein shakes. Actually, I remember the very first time I had a protein shake. It was after um, coming back from Finland when I was in college. I was studying international marketing and I came back and my girlfriend, my roommate, my best friend, had um, gotten into like bodybuilding competitions and she was like, we're gonna go work out and we're gonna have these protein shakes. And I was like, okay. And so, um, this is before I, ever, I knew I knew nutrition science, but I didn't know this protein shake thing yet. And so you guys, we would go work out and then we would have these protein shakes and then we'd shower and we'd get ready for our day and then we'd go on to our day. And like that one thing transformed my body. That one thing transformed my body. Working out and then having the protein shakes. Now they transformed my body, but they didn't transform my health. The health we talked about last week, that had to happen through eating the right foods, okay? So if you want a body transformation, hear my words. Do the workouts 
and have the protein shake within 30 minutes of your workout, okay? If you're not yet signed up for Isogenics, just reach out to me. I just got, I just signed up um, Jen last week. She's on it, she's on a really good program. Um, and um, I'm always here to help you with your Isogenics orders. And, and once you get into Isogenics, you're never gonna get out because you're gonna love it. They have so many things for you to try that are healthy snacks, that are um, meal replacement shakes, um, snacks that are based around protein and good carbohydrates. Um, it's just a high quality program. It's a high quality company. You guys, there's, it's bigger than the NFL. Isogenics is no joke. It's a um, $4 billion global company that is all about fueling athletes with the right kind of ingredients. Um, they're bigger than the NFL. It's a $4 billion global company. It's incredible. So um, their products are amazing. Um, I highly recommend them. If you don't want to do them, then get something somewhere else. But I highly recommend these because they are high quality and you will notice a difference in how fast your body transforms when you start using high quality ingredients. All right, you guys, so I'm going to jump off. I have, um, I'll answer any other questions. Just post them below. So much love for you. I'm going to be coming on live every day this week. So we got a lot to talk about this week. So, so much love to you. I will see you um, tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about what's next. We're going to talk about, um, oh yeah, lifestyle, lifestyle tools and supplements. We'll probably be talking more about that tomorrow in the next video. All right, you guys, thank you and have a great day. Bye.